All right. Um, <clears throat> on uh, on this uh, part here, we're, we are going to be talking about some different numbering systems because our system, you know, we we like our system, but <clears throat> if you think about it, that system that we use for numbers hasn't always been around. Um, of course, people have been counting uh, from way back, but <clears throat> they they maybe use different numbering systems than than we use. They did use different numbering systems. So we're just going to talk about uh, some early ones. You know, there were others. Uh, the book talks about some others, but the, these are the ones I like to talk about. Um, we're going to start with the Egyptian system from about uh, 3000 BC. This one's from. And <clears throat> interesting, yeah, they they had uh, some interesting symbols. Um, <clears throat> their uh, one was just kind of a a one, just like ours. Uh, they call it a stroke mark. Equals R1. Okay, so that's good news. Their one looked like R1, pretty much. Their, uh, <clears throat> however, their symbols did not include a symbol for two or three. If they wanted to do two or three, they would just do two stroke marks or three stroke marks or Five would even be just five stroke marks. I don't even think they did the, you know, we sometimes do the, the four and then a slash for the five. Maybe they did that. I don't know. But <clears throat> we could check that. But they didn't have anything for uh, two through nine, matter of fact. They would just do stroke marks for two through nine, two strokes, three strokes. No, they didn't have another symbol till ten. And I guess, I guess we call it... Uh, by name, we call it the heel bone. Um, <clears throat> it kind of looks like the back part of a foot is is where maybe they get that. But that was their ten. The heel bone mark was uh, worth ten, and <clears throat> they're similar. You know, uh, our system is base ten, right? We we uh, have what we call base ten. Um, we'll talk more about that. In a moment, but uh, uh, there's there's was a, a base ten also. They went by power. That just means we use powers of ten, and they they did too. Uh, the next mark was for a hundred, and it was the scroll, or what we call it was the scroll, because it resembled kind of an unraveled scroll there. <clears throat> um, but yeah, it it went to the next power of ten, which is a hundred. Then, of course, what will be next? A thousand? A thousand was uh, this little flower looking thing, supposed to. Lotus flower. That was a thousand. And then ten thousand. Well, that's really going to test your drawing abilities there. It's supposed to be a pointing finger. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> I failed that test for sure, but. I used to could draw better than I can now, but I haven't done it in a while. But anyway, yeah, they had different symbols for their numbers, okay? And this was a few of them, I think, on the sheet. Um, I do have a sheet there at the bottom of the sheet, <clears throat> the information sheet, I call it. There's a couple more, don't I have? Uh, yeah, there's a like a whale and a... I think they call it astonished person, but I'm not even going to try to draw those. But they did have some others. I think this will get get us by with what what we'll do. Um, <clears throat> so anyway, they, these were their uh, symbols, or some of their symbols. Now, <clears throat> uh, the good thing about it was in their system, all you had to do was add up the symbols that that they had, and that that was your number. For example, if I had uh, two scrolls, three heel bones, and four tally marks or strokes, that's what? Scrolls 100, heel bones 10, those are ones, so 234? Okay, 
So their system was easy in that regard. You just add up the symbols. In other words, they didn't have any place value. Like in our numbers, if I say uh, 5,261, yeah, that's five, but it means more than five, doesn't it? It means 5,000 because it's in the thousands place. Well, they didn't have that. This being here didn't mean anything different than, yeah, if I, what would this one be? How much would that be? Well, I got 234. It's the same number, okay? Yeah, they, their symbols didn't have any place value whatsoever. In, in other words, it wasn't positional. Their system was not positional. The position of the symbol did not mean anything. Uh, it was the scroll was 100, whether it was here at the end, or at the front, in the middle, it didn't matter, okay? So that. <clears throat> That's, their system was less complicated, I guess you might say, than ours. One thing, um, one thing I, I like to point out on the Egyptians was they did, they did have a rather nice way of multiplying. Of course, they didn't have calculators uh, at that time, <clears throat> so they, uh, you know, they had to devise different ways of calculating stuff. And uh, let me just show you here the Egyptian method of uh, multiplication, or one of them. The Egyptian me method for multiplying. Uh, let's, uh, <clears throat> we'll just also uh, mention it's called successive duplication. Because that's essentially what we're going to do. All right, so let's say, uh, say I was going to multiply the numbers 19 times 36. Easy for us uh, these days, especially if you have access to calculators, which phones have calculators now. So very easy to multiply, I think. <clears throat> but back then, back in the day, the Egyptians' day, um, wasn't so much so easy. Um, here's the way they would do it. <clears throat> What they would do is they would take the larger of the numbers. Of course, I'm, I'm using our, our numbers now. Of course, they would have theirs and heel bones and stroke marks and all that, but I'm just going to use our numbers. What they would do is they take the larger number, which in this case is 36, and then write a 1 beside that. So if it had been 19 times 45, we would have put 45 with a 1 beside it. So whatever the larger number is, put a 1 beside it. Okay? called successive duplication because what we're going to do is we're just going to start doubling. And we're going to continue doubling <clears throat> until we don't need to double anymore. I'll tell you why that is in a second. All right, so I just double. Double the number. Now, why Why would that be easy for them? Well, you know, you're talking about three heel bones and six tally marks. Well, we could double three heel bones and six tally marks very easily because that would give us six heel bones and 12 tally marks, and then we can... You know, we could combine them to make some uh, heel bone out of those uh, tally marks. But anyway, um, doubling was easy. So that's, all right, so if I double, it gives me 72. Double here gives me 2, all right? So we're just going to continue doubling, like I said, until, uh, until a certain point. I'll show, tell you about in just a second, all right? So I double again, 144. Double again, you get four. So I just keep doubling down here. All right, so eight and 288. Now, <clears throat> there is a stopping point here, and the stopping point is when I can get these or some combination of these to add up to be 19, the other number. I can't add those to be 19 yet, right? Uh, 15, 15 is all I got. So you keep doubling until you can make the 19 out of those. So I need to double once again, don't I? Double the 8, you get 16. Double the 288, that's 576. Okay, so, so now it's more than 19. So here's what I do, is I just count the ones that add up to be 19. So that would be 16 and what? 2 and 1, right? That would be 19. All right, so I'm just going to count those. Well, to get the, uh, the answer, though, that I want, what I do is I count the ones that are directly opposite of those. 
So these add up to be 19. So if I add the ones across from those, should be the answer 19 of 19 times 36. Let's see. So 36, 72, and 576. What do those add up to be? 108, uh, 684? I do believe. Is that right? 36, 72, and 576 is 684. Anybody believe that? Is that okay? Just add the ones across from the, the 1, the 2, and the 16. Okay, so just the ones that yeah. add up to 19. Just the ones that add up to be 19. Those are the only ones that I add up over here. If I'd used the 4, then I would have added the 144. Is that 684? Is that right? Somebody had told me yet, so I want to make sure. All right. Okay, well, we can quickly check that now because what does your calculator say 19 times 36 is? 684. Okay, so there you go. That was their way of doing calculating. <laughs> well, they didn't have uh, calculators, so um, the, other, you know, the other thing, if you want to do 19... You'd have to do 36 19 times. So if you think about it, that was an easier way of doing it, you see. <clears throat> Just a few numbers as opposed to 19 of them. Yep, those three added together. Okay. All right, so that's, <clears throat> that's the Egyptian system. A little bit different than ours, wasn't it? Well, all these are a little bit different. The other, uh, there's three of them I want to talk about. The uh, second one let me talk about is uh, the Babylonian system. <clears throat> and interestingly enough, their system had only two symbols. It was a symbol for one, which is they used a wedge. And they used a double wedge. <laughs> wedge, two wedges ang angled together like so or something like that. Okay. For ten. That's all they had, symbols. Well, uh, if you think about that, that's going to be hard if we just have those symbols alone. That's going to be hard to make big numbers because if I had, if I just was using 10 straight up and one, what if I had 2,465? Well, that's a lot of double wedges, okay. They actually, uh, actually, they had a little more complicated system. They added a little something to it. It turns out they also used uh, what we describe as a base 60. Here's what, <clears throat> here's what that means. Um, what, they, uh, what they did is, <clears throat> you know, kind of, kind of like ours, um, you know, if this using my number here, 5,261. This means 6 times 10, doesn't it? 60, and that's 2 times 100, uh, 200. Well, <clears throat> they would do the same thing, but they would use uh, a base of 60. Here's what I mean. Let's say I had, um, you know, if I just had a number like that, yeah, that's straight up. Double wedge and three singles, that's 13, okay? However, what they would do is if they had a double wedge, say two double wedges, and let's say one single wedge, and then they had another group here of a, uh, sing a double wedge and then five singles. They would put them in groups like this. And what it would mean is, you know, this of course is the uh, 15, right? And this, of course, is 21, 10, 10, and 1, right? But <clears throat> this, this group here would be, and that's where the base 60 comes in, they would multiply this one by 60. 
Now, why 60? I don't know that anybody knows for sure. Um, it's been speculated that it was 60 is divisible by a lot of things. It's divisible by 2 and 3 and uh, 4 and 5 and 6 and 10 and 12. But it's just a nice number, they thought, I guess. But it, it was base 60. They used 60 as this, this number here. So that way they could get bigger numbers um, out of fewer symbols here because if you multiply the 21 by 60, that's going to give you what? Um, 1260 plus the 15 is 1275. 1275 in our, in our, in our number. Okay. Yeah, the base, the one that's 60. Yeah, the first one on the right is just the straight, straight up, just the symbols, and then the next one over is times the 60. Now, what if we went one more step further? That it a double, double, three singles. Double, 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 single, and then double, and four singles. Okay. All right, so we've got three groups there, don't I? Got this group, this group, and this group. <clears throat> well, this one, just straight up. Whatever it is, right? 14, 10 and 4, four ones. All right, what about this group? Well, I got 31, but it's the second group here from over. So we've got to do what? Multiply it by 60. Yeah. <clears throat> but then I have a third group, which is 23, and, well, it's. Not going to be multiplied by 60 because we've already got that group by 60. Now we've got to go, uh, we've got to increase a little bit. Just like ours, we go up, we go 10, 100s, thousands. Theirs goes up basically the same way but with 60s. Um, so what do you think here? Yeah, most, most people would say 120. However, we're talking powers of 60. So we're talking the second power of 60, which is not 120. Yeah, it's 60 times 60, which is 3,600. So yeah, they would multiply that next group over by 60 to the second power, which is 3,600. So I'd have 23 times 3,600, 31 times 60. Is that okay? eighty-two thousand eight hundred. 31 times 60, 980, 14, is that right? And then add those together. What do you got? 84, huh? Did I do it right? I get 84,674. That ain't right. Let me try that again. 23 times 3,600. Plus 83,794? Yeah, okay. I did something wrong that first time. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Now, so that's how we determine what number they have. What if, say, we wanted to take one of our numbers and convert it to Babylonian? What? Yeah. This one will always be, yeah, the one on the right will always just be straight up whatever they are. And then you just go up. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so let's convert our number 
to Babylonia. All right, well, that's uh, a little different story, isn't it? We don't have the symbols there to just convert over. We have to uh, think about it a little bit. Well, uh, hopefully, fairly obviously there, I'm going to need two groups. Two parts, right? Because uh, <clears throat> the second group basically kicks in when you get bigger than 60. Now, why don't I have it? No, I have a third group. Well, the third group would kick in when I have 3,600 or bigger. This was just 1274. So I just have two groups. The first group is uh, so I've got, I just have, a, I'm just going to have a two part Babylonian number here. The first group is the 60s, what we multiply by 60, right? Well, to determine that, uh, what we do here is uh, just take 1274 divided by 60, and let's see what that, how many times 60 goes into it, basically, is what we're asking. 21.23 is what I get. So, evenly uh, 60 goes into 1274 21 times. So that tells me 21 needs to go here. So I'm going to put 21 in that first group. <clears throat> now what goes in the second group? Well, in the second group, since this group will be 21 times 60, that is... 1260. So what goes over here? Well, if I want to make 1274, yeah, I better put 14 over here. <clears throat> so 14 would be the double and four singles. Okay? So yeah, to convert the Babylonian over, <clears throat> uh, convert our numbers to Babylonian divided by 60. And then, then you got it. Go from there. Okay? All right. The third...